This is my typical full day of eating and it starts like probably most of yours with a coffee. In my case it's an espresso that I drink black without any cream or sugar. I also try to get some sunlight in the morning while I drink my coffee and before I have breakfast I get my first 7000 steps in without leaving the house. I bought myself an adjustable hate desk and then I also have a walking pad that I can push under the desk and it's also flippable. I can highly recommend this particular one, I'm not sponsored. It's a very good product, the Amazon link is in the description. I walk at 5.5 km per hour which is about 3.4 miles for 60 minutes while working. This speed is still okay to read and answer emails, organize your day in a calendar or just watch a couple of YouTube videos without really noticing that you are walking. After my walk I eat breakfast that I usually prepare the night before and store in the fridge. In a bowl I eat 50 grams of oats, instant or rolled oats both work fine, followed up by protein powder. Casein will make the oatmeal a lot creamier and is my personal favorite for this, however you can also eat whey protein, more importantly is that you use a protein powder that is sweet or this kind of overnight oats could become bitter. 15 grams or half a scoop goes into the bowl, next is 5 grams of cocoa powder followed up by both peanut butter and powdered peanuts. This particular one is called PB2 and is basically peanut butter with most of the fat removed, resulting in a lot more protein. 13 goes goes into the bowl and then I will also add 10 grams of regular peanut butter, again try to find one that has some added sugar in it so it tastes sweet. Next is my favorite dairy ingredient and it's skier. This is a ridiculous protein source, you can also use non-fat Greek yogurt, 150 grams goes into the bowl and lastly I add milk. I found this protein milk with 7.5 grams of protein for every 100 grams of milk with which is over double the amount of regular milk. So that is another way to bump up your protein intake, 100 grams goes into the bowl and then mix this and refrigerate it overnight. The next morning before you eat it you can also add some blueberries, strawberries or a banana on top, that's up to you. My first meal has 544 calories with 52 grams of protein. After breakfast I get back to work and I still try to work at my desk while standing for 15 to 20 minutes at a time until around 12 o'clock when I have lunch. Now every one of my meals always starts with preparing a lean protein source. This time I will slice a chicken breast that weighs around 180 grams into thin slices. This varies from meal to meal, sometimes I use lean ground beef, sometimes turkey, it really depends on what I have in the fridge. After slicing the chicken breast, the next thing that I always prepare is a good amount of vegetables. I eat pretty much all the vegetables that exist, it could be zucchini, it could be a cabbage called pak choy, bad peppers or onions, I love vegetables and always try to switch things up. This time I will use a zucchini and an onion, there is no particular reason, I was just in the mood for them. First cut off both ends of the zucchini, then cut them lengthways into four long strips, turn them and then slice them again into smaller pieces. Also chop up the yellow onion that weighs around 60 grams before prepping the next part of my meal, the carbohydrate sauce. I eat all types of carbohydrates, potatoes, rice, tortillas, noodles or pasta, usually I try to aim for about 200 calories worth of carb sauce per meal. You don't need to be a carbophobic, as long as you don't overeat on calories you won't become fat. I mean look at the obesity rate all over the world. The last places on this list are countries where carbohydrates play a huge role in their food culture, so relax. For this meal I'm using rice, but sometimes I just use one of these pre-boiled rice packages instead of cooking raw rice. In here are two servings and they have almost 200 calories each, which is perfect for days where you don't want to cook rice, so just measure 125 grams which is one serving in a bowl. Next one of the most important things is the spices or the sauce. This is where you can add different flavors so your meals aren't boring, besides salt and pepper I really encourage you to try different flavors, for this one I'm going to use garlic powder, cayenne pepper, pepper and cumin. The last thing is that I usually add some sort of healthy fat source, this time it's avocado that I will use to make a dip. Slice it in half, put one piece into the fridge for tomorrow and put the other one into the bowl, this half of an avocado yielded 60 grams of flesh. Next is cream cheese with 0.2% fat, you can also use light cream cheese, the calorie difference isn't that big, 30 grams so half of the avocado amount goes into the bowl, followed up by the juice of half a lime, a pinch of salt, freshly ground black pepper and a couple of dashes of garlic powder. Then mix this with a fork until you get a creamy and smooth consistency, this dip tastes incredible with any kind of chicken and rice. 
So, heat up a pan to medium heat, add in some oil and then add the zucchini with a pinch of salt. The zucchini needs a small head start for a couple of minutes so we can get rid of the water that comes out of them. Two minutes later, when they have a small amount of color, add in the diced onions with some oil and keep frying everything, stirring occasionally for about two to three minutes until the onions become translucent and get some color as well. Then push the vegetables aside, add in some more oil and now add the chicken breast. Try to separate the chicken so everything gets in contact with the pan for maximum browning and and let it sit there for about a minute. Now add some salt, black pepper, a couple of dashes each of cayenne pepper, garlic powder and cumin. Once the chicken looks nicely browned on one side, like here, flip it and let it fry for another minute. Then add the pre-cooked rice, give it another stir and now also add a small splash of water. Once everything is combined, add the chicken and rice into a plate and what I like doing is pouring the avocado dip on top of the chicken and mixing the entire meal together. This tastes amazing, you need to try it out. And if you like it, you need to check out my cookbook. There are over 190 recipes developed with high protein and low calories in mind so you can have all the delicious meals you are thinking of just made healthier so you can lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life. Whether it's breakfast, lunch or dessert or even nutritional tables for lean protein sources and calories and vegetables, everything you need is in there. And the best part is that I'm constantly updating the book and you will receive every single update for free once you've purchased it. You won't regret buying this, link is in the description. My lunch came in at 600 calories and 49 grams of protein. After that, at around 4 p.m., I usually have a snack before I go to the gym. Normally, I eat some kind of pudding or yogurt. In my grocery store, I can buy these high-protein puddings from Airman that taste incredible. They have around 150 calories and 20 grams of protein and come in a ton of different flavors. This time, I will go with strawberry mousse flavor. Now, look at this consistency. This is just amazing. Also, I like to add some healthy fats on top, so I measure about 10 grams of walnuts that I will break up and top the mousse with. Additionally, I like to eat a protein bar at this point. Here's how you can decide if a protein bar has good macros. I call it the 10% rule, meaning it needs at least one gram of protein for every 10 calories. This Bear Belts bar is a perfect example. It has 200 calories and 20 grams of protein, which meets the minimum. A crazy example is the wider protein bar. It has 167 calories and 27 grams of protein, which is ridiculous ridiculous for a protein bar. On top of that, I like to have some fruit. Again, I eat all fruits that exist. This time I grabbed myself a banana. My snack has 486 calories and 50 grams of protein. My last meal is at around 7 p.m. and sometimes I just don't want to cook and need something cold. So what I do is first prepare some cold meat. This one is turkey and has very good macros, 120 calories and 21 grams of protein. This is a great alternative for a lean protein sauce if you don't want to cook yourself a meal. I lay this on a plate as the base and then I will also add this food, fresh mozzarella cheese. A lot of people don't know about this, but for a cheese it has very good macros, 160 calories and 21 grams of protein because it's available in a low fat version unlike most other cheeses. First you need to remove the water that is stored in the package and then you get a small ball that feels like gummy bears. Slice it into thin pieces and lay it on top of the turkey. This is a classic Italian combination. One ball usually has 125 grams and thus 200 calories. Then chop up some vegetables, this time 100 grams of tomatoes and add them on top. Next is some olive oil, about 4 grams is enough here, along with a pinch of salt, freshly ground black pepper and some dried oregano. You can eat this as is, but I like to have some sort of bread with it. Sometimes I also use bagels or I have some tortillas lying around, these are protein tortillas. Not only are they the cheapest tortillas in my grocery store, but they also have 120 calories with 7 grams of protein, which is pretty good for tortillas. I'm going to toast them in a dry pan for about 1-2 to two minutes each side until they have some brown spots. My dinner comes in at 634 calories and 62 grams of protein, so my total daily macro intake is 2264 calories, 195 grams of carbs, 72 grams of fat and 213 grams of protein, so as you can see, it's really not that hard to eat a lot of protein. 